So when me da grow up now, the whole heap of time I always pray say me da dead like me da just go sleep and don't wake up. I try to kill myself a couple times. Yeah, a mm -hmm. couple times. I just couldn't go through with it, but I tried a couple times. I drink things, I swallow things. Because I just feel like no perp. Because I say, if I just dare so, and people just uh, ill treat me, so for no reason why I can't see. Maybe I a burden for you, maybe I a jacket for you, so it might as well me. One at a time, I start cussing all my dead mother. So why is she dead and gone? I used to go lay down on her grave and ball to the point where I had a dream that she had come to me. She said she would have rather poison me more than feed me. That's what my stepmother said. The neighbor had heard. I just spread the head. Get me off of this train and get a wall away. She's taking me into custody as a suspicion from Rappi. My father didn't kill you, but I'm a little boy and my mother, you know. I'll shot me get on start. Anything can't wait, they take up gun and them thing they and show paper and them thing that we are run from. Hi, my name is Phoenix and this is my story. As a child, I was abused by my stepmother, physically, mentally and emotionally. And I was abandoned by my father and my family members. Why do you want to tell your story? One of the reasons is because it can change how people treat their children, mm -hmm. number one, and it can also change how a person feels about themselves. Because right, right. there was a point where I never liked myself none at all. Mm -hmm. And that is how people end up searching for love in the wrong places. Right. Yeah, so if, if my story can help somebody, mm -hmm. that would have been one of the aim. How much does this affect you? It affects me a lot, up to today. In your adult? In my adulthood, yeah. Yeah. Because um, I'm living with PTSD. And PTSD is basically, it consists of having flashbacks of things that happened in the right. past and a lot of things happened. So imagine me just living with all of that every day, replaying in my head. It causes me not to function normally. What was life? like for you growing up as a child? Um, growing up, I kind of did it all over the place because mother died when I was young. She died when I was three, right? Three. So um, it was a rift between the families, my mother's family and my father's family. So, you know, there was a clash. There was a toss-up. Um, this side wanted the kids. This side wasn't giving over the kids. It was a toss-up. So we were back and forth yeah. between my father and my grandmother, which is my mother's mother. Okay. So, you know, we were in Kingston for my grandmother and we were in St. Thomas for my father. Walk me through the whole event, right? Of how you were treated by your stepmother right. and your father. Remember, I don't have a mother, right? So, mm -hmm. if I see a female in my father's life, me, I go basically want drawn to her. Right. Because I want a mother figure. Right. Right. So, um, I was trying to get close to her, but she never wanted that. She, she, make, it, she make it clear. So she no want that. Mm -hmm. um, the incident with it, when I found out she was pregnant with my sister, right? Mm -hmm. They came to visit us in Kingston because they were living in St. Thomas. They came to visit us in Kingston. So me I listen and I hear say my stepmother pregnant. I heard it was a girl. So me glad. So I walk up. They were they were they were in a trench like at the, the gate. I can't remember. There's a trench that open place, but there was a little trench right there. So they were standing there and me draw close to them and. They were talking and I put my hand on her belly and I rub it like this and she slapped with my hand. She slapped it? Yeah, she so slapped. So what age were you at the time? I was Remember? about eight, nine. Mm -hmm. So she slapped with my hand and for the rest of the visit, I never really got too close to her. But you know, I could hear one and two things of them at all. In my mind, I think maybe this could have hurt the baby. That's why she slapped with my hand. I never think right. much of it. Remember me little, so I don't know. Right. I was always told that I was a jacket. By whom? My stepmother. By your stepmother? Yes. So you ever said to your father? Yes. So what did you say to your father? Said I was lying. But came to find out that he called me a jacket when I was born. He told my mother I was a jacket. Your father? Yes. So wow. 
when my stepmother came up with a jacket conversation mm -hmm. and I said it to him, he said I was lying. But she tell me that every day. She used to tell me she don't know why my mother did left her jacket there so. Cause she know say, me a jacket. She, she ring it on my ears like every day. It was this time. We went to the pipe. We were living with her. We were living at her family's place. They had to move from where we were living. And we were at her family's place. It was on a hill, right? Me, my sister, Janet and Pauline, we went to the, we went to the pipe. We came, we came back up. When we were coming up back, you know the hill steep, so we are stop, we are rest. When we reach one guava tree, we did stop and I pick guava, but we did it too long, so me I said, no, come. Because I know, say, we will wait too long for go up. And me alone, I go get in a trouble. Everybody know. Right. Say, and me, I go get in a it, it never hide. It's not something we hide. But why you alone when Because me seen had the jacket that was left by my prostitute mother in a them way. Mm. Right? All right. So um, when we were going back up, I said she stand up at the gate with a stick in her hand. My heart just start to go so. Sorry. My heart just start to go so because I know that stick there for me now. I remember it was four of us. Right. I remember I have some set in my ear and everybody I walk. They walk past her. One walk past her goes to one walk past her goes to her. She don't look past none of them. So when I walk past me, I say, all right, she probably just come out here with this stick for treatment. She never says, so I walk past her. I start to feel the stick I walk in my head. She look out every set in my head with the stick. Wow. All right, after that, when we went up, she said, I forgot to be the baby, right? The baby is still young at this point. I don't remember her age. But she was still young at this point. So the lick that she gave me now, I was trembling. Me that tremble. Me that shake so really hard. Man. Yeah, man. She licked my heart down my head with the stick, man. So me did a ball. Right? So um, when we reached up, I was bathing the baby. But through me a cry so hard. Me a shake. The baby soapy, slippery. I was on. See, this was the ground right here. All right. So this was the ground. Mm -hmm. The bad pan was on the ground. And I was stooped over the bad pan with the baby in my hand. So through the baby, I cry and I wriggle. Me a shake and everything. The baby slip out of my hand. And she dropped on the grass. And the woman come and she start to rat me again. This is a time her grandmother come and she say. But why would she give it? How old was that baby? Um about four or five months. So why would she get twelve? Because it was one? my job. Remember me watched the nappy them. We are not my job. Mm -hmm. I made all of that. Okay. We are not my job. So the baby slip out of your hand? The baby slip out of my hand and she drop on the grass. So the lady run come, she started to thump me up and she said, Chew she lick me, I fling down her pitney on the grass. Her grandmother came and she said, You know, you must stop ill treat this dead left pitney. You must be careful. You I can't forget Miss, Miss Johnson. Miss Johnson said, Be very careful how you treat this dead left child. And she said to her grandmother, She said, Me, a child, must have a secret for her 70 odd year old grandmother for she had to take up for me. Can you imagine? And when my father come, you know, I get it again. Because she tell him, say, I fling down the pitney. You know, the grass. Wow. Yeah. So, you explain, you never explain to your daddy? I'm not here, I'm not want here. All right, I have a sprained foot when I sprain at school. Mm -hmm. School call him for care me, my foot sprain. And him send me back at school upon the sprained foot. Because the stepmother say, I fake me, I fake it. When my foot swell big, so. So the school call him, make him aware and stuff, stuff, stuff. I don't remember how the doctor part did go, but right. I did the one for a couple of days. She came in the room and she said, she did this. You must think you can't treat me like how you trick your father. And I see my father come in, bust the door. It was a French door, them, because our grandmother, them are some English people. So they have the French door, and my, grandfather, my father bust the door and him say, get up and put on your uniform and come go to school. I don't even say but daddy, because if I say but daddy, I probably get licked before I go to school. So I just get up, get ready, put on the uniform. As touch of a reach at Seaford School. Because wow. we have to come off of the hill on the spring foot. By the time I go to school, I sweat, I tremble, my red, purple, because when I smile, I'm a little, little lighter. The teacher them bring me into the office and them say, Whose child is this? They asked me who my father, who my parents, and I tell them who my father. And one of the ladies said, no, I don't believe that this man would have sent him to child to school like this. This is how, not no way, me tell him, him not listen to away. 
the lady tell him. Because he can obviously say, say me have a sprained foot because the school did call him about it. And he still send me to school. Up till now, I have a problem. It's the same foot where I'm messing with me right now. That foot After they lean, so many years. Yeah, that foot they lean for all of my life. Your father not defend you or never. Up to now, when an adult to them say me bitter and I be like me tell. What about your sister? You say you have a sister. Me and my sister don't talk at all for over twenty years. Why? She has never defended me, and she's always been there. Because so the two on the group with the father she, and the we are same mother, same father. But she look more like my father. Okay. Me look like my mother, and now. Me just a look like my father, like face shape like for them. You can't say like certain things where them have me have. Them say them not them have to claim me because they know them bloodline and they know I am their brother's child. So them not follow nobody. We were having um computer class at school, right? Um, me fascinated with information from a young. So when. They told us, us, when they told us that computers were coming to the school, I said, all right, I make sure I left school at school over. I run go to the gas station and tell my father, he still work at the gas station, they out at Seaford. I run go to the gas station and I say, afraid, you know, I'm afraid. Mm. Because based upon how he treat me, I'm kind of afraid for God but to him. But as a child, you shouldn't be afraid of your father. I'm afraid for God to him because he got to him and most time he run me and shame me. So I'm kind of afraid. So I got to him and I said, daddy, um, they might bring computer around the school and I ask him for $500 for pay for the computer class. And him say, move in front of me, forget it from me. Say, I want money for get $500. Move in front of me. So I said, all right, I start walking around and I ball. Because I walk around like little boy in the avenue, they might trouble me. And your father run you like that. And I met my ball and I go around. And man, you know, I go to school. And me say, me and my sister get ready in the room and I see him call her. Tisha, come here. She go into the room and me a peep. So when me a peep, me see him take out something, mm -hmm. fold it up, gear in her, and then she goes and put it in her pocket. Wow. Still skip my mind. We are go to school now and we meet up on my schoolmate them. She meet up on our school, our classmate them. Um, so we start to discuss computer. Right. And me say, oh, you know, so Kadema say, you ask your father for the money or me I say, oh, well, on, you know, so me did ask him. He didn't give me the money, but I see him give my sister something this morning. So I figure say that the money him gave her computer class up. So run go catch her up, tap her and I say, this morning, I see daddy give something you put it in your pocket. When give? She said, I didn't give her nothing. So I was like, I see him give something. Right. Tell me what he give. She right. said, he didn't give me nothing. I say, no, say, if you don't tell me, I'm not going to like it. I swear I tell her that. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, he give her $500 for pay for computer class. We bust out a ball in the same time. Me, me, now I understand why people used to say, she and my father killed my mother because she did deal with my father before my mother did. Now I understand why. Because if my mother was such an issue, that would explain why she ate me that much. Wow. So you believe that? Yeah. You believe that him really... Ate me? No. Kill Killed my mother? mother? Uh, not physically. Right. But the events that happened. Because my mother get licked by a truck, you know. Mm -hmm. That truck licked my mother and killed her. Okay. Yeah, one truck slap her off of the road. She and her friend. Friend never dead, but my mother dead. I am yet to meet that lady. I always want to meet her. Because they were saying that it was the relationships that my father had going on was what drove my mother to go street, chocolate car. Actually, when my mother died, they found a letter in her possession, right? Mm -hmm. And one of my aunts gave it to me. Me used to sit down and look on the letter like, why God? Why she would have given me something? Not why he would have write it to her, you know? Why she would have given me something like this? Because me I look on the treatment that my mother used to go through from my father, which is probably why she got her own make chocolate killer. The letter read, you need to come out of my house because I don't want to see you. The only reason why I touch you is because you is a cocky cooler. That's who wrote that? My letter? father to my mother. So I don't know which part she did to come out. Go with two babies. 
Me had three, my sister had four. Man. When my mother died, she had 22 year old. Basically, I was being abused every day. Me had tried to talk to my father so he could have maybe put a stop to it or say something about it. He basically turned for me too. Mm -hmm. He basically turned for me too. So I remember after that computer incident, I mm -hmm. got school the day, I made a ball. My friend them did have to block me around from the teacher. Because when she came in, I didn't have so much tears. I, was sitting. I used to tell her one and two things. Because she knew my father. She noticed when my grades started to drop. So you know, obviously she started to ask for a go on. So I tell her, um, like I get a piece of paper and I start to write a letter to my father. And I said, like, Daddy, I'm tired to tell you what Sandra did to me. Every time I tell you what Sandra did to me, you beat me. You tell me, say, I'm a liar. So it's like, you're still going to make sure you kill me. So because I don't want you to sit down and make sure kill me, I'm going to go to my grandmother's yard and stay. That's my grandmother here in Kingston. My friend them did make up the day and give me money. So I could have paid my fear and everything for coming to Kingston. So basically you're planning to run away? Yes. Because of the treatment that right. you were receiving from right. both your from father both, right. and your stepmother. Right. So, okay, there was even a time when she when I asked her for food and she told me she would have rather pies me more than feed me so I don't have to ask her for the food. What? She said she would have rather poison me more than feed me. So I'm not for ask her for no food. That's what your stepmother That's what my stepmother said. The neighbor had heard. So the neighbor called me and she said, if you're afraid to eat from your stepmother, come around here and we give you food because how oh, she treat you, mm -hmm. I don't know if she won't poison you for true. So did you mention that to your father? No, she tell my father said she give me the food and threw me a big man, me and a man as me say me not want it. That she told and go to people yard go and yam say, you know, him batter me. Beat you for that again. Yes. When I come to Kingston now to my grandmother, that was the next kettle of fish again. My grandmother is an old lady. She up in her age by this, maybe up in her 60s or so. Right. So, she used to sell still. She used to sell on the roadside and stuff. So, um, me go there now and I say, everything will be all right, you know? Because me and my grandmother could have tough it out. Because, you know, she sell. Me, she maybe can send me to school. Me never know my father either go, nah, look for me none at all. Because when I go to my grandmother, I say, my school fees still have to pay. So, I still have to go to school and everything. My father refused to pay the school fee. So, I'm not paying none. I'm not buying a book. I'm not buying a uniform or nothing. So I start off here to talk to my grandmother now. Mm -hmm. And I have to ask her now for school fee and start to get bad. Because as I tell you, them times when I did kind of feel uh, away about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. For help me for go to school. I did kind of feel away about it at the time, but still feel away about it. But now I kind of understand where she was coming from. It wasn't really her job to take right, care of me. Right, right. Even though me are Pitney were dead, Pitney, but. It wasn't her job. In her real life, it was my father's it job. It was your father's job. Right. Because you never asked to come here. Right. So um right. my grandmother basically said she, she can do it. She said she can do it. She now nah, put herself in on a problem if you take care of anybody pitney. Because her child rearing days over. And if I want to go to school, I go start sell my front. So I well, basically I'm... drop out of school because I don't know how sell front. You know, how oh, I could have reached school, because my granny didn't give me. But there were times when she had to go places, and she left me for self here. Right. So when she left me for self here, the teeth out her money, mm -hmm. and put it down for go to school the next morning. But when she find out now, that I had teeth out the money, she stopped left me her stall. So I have to eventually just sit down there. Just sit down there? Just sit down there with her. Way. So I live with my granny. She used to put me out of the door for sleep for two. It's when she find out that my father now gonna do nothing. She start to lock me out of the door. Rain could not fall like come out. You see my gosso? Knock on her door. I say, Granny, rain away me up. She said, move your watch sitting at the side for my door. If I don't pay no rent in here, rare and ta da da. She start to go on. Wow. Remember, she didn't have a spring bed. It was a three-quarter bed. But she yeah. said she buy her son. Mm -hmm. She buy her son game for start life. So when he moved out, when he got married and he moved out, she gave me the bed for sleep on, because we sleep with her. So right. she gave me the three-quarter bed. You see, every time me and her have an issue, 
And she decides so my father now nah, give her nothing me not for in her place because my father now nah, mind me. My father now nah, pay no rent. He now nah, buy no food. He now nah, do nothing. So she took up her... The, the sponge that she used to put on the spring bed was a thin sponge. Not even thick. Right. If you lay down on it, you, you have to pad it up. Like up it's still not feel. No, just, sponge. just mm. flat sponge. with full. You see, when she have an issue with me and my father, when I take care of me, she lift up the sponge. Wow. She sleep on the spring. You see, she sees me asleep too comfortable upon the spring. She just start to get up, get up half a day, son. When we get up, she just lean it up. Says so our son bed, father money don't buy it. That's my grandmother. But them who are semi bitter. When my auntie now, which is my mother's sister, find out say, find out what I go on in the yard. I mm -hmm. go to school and all these things, so she said, I can come from, you know, I can come chill by them, because they want somebody to work out, so I can come chill by them. They send me to school, you know, but I mm -hmm. come by them when I want and whatever, whatever. Now my family, they are party people. They are party people, and I grew up around them, I go out, I hot people, them dress up, hair style, still no business with me. Mm -hmm. um, we get food from them, but I can ask them for it. Right. If you know what I mean. Right, right. Um, at one point, I did it over my auntie for some time. I did it my grandmother for some time. So, then I did have this party where they normally go. On a Wednesday, every Wednesday, they used to go. My cousin, them, right? Right. This night, they said they carry me. Okay. So, I was 14. So, I go. Go with them. Two cousins. Two of them are adults. Go with them, and when I did the party, party I go on and thing and thing, and we did it. At one point, one man, I don't know if he come along or them, if, I don't know if, him, if he came along, if he met us or we met him. I don't remember how that go, but we were face to face, we were talking. And I remember my cousin saying to the man, my male cousin saying to the man, um, my little cousin, you know, say, you know, to her mother dead and her father not to look on her sleep with my granny, but my granny to her out the door all the while, she did, you know. I want you to take care of my little cousin. That was a conversation with him and the man. And adult? Yeah. So, this is my big adult cousin, right? Right. So, when I go tell you now, my big adult cousin, when you tell me, say, I go do that. that. So, me basically, you say you have to go there with the man. You go there with the man. Yeah, them carry me to the man. See her, yeah. So, anyway. Time passed, time passed, eventually me and the man in a relationship. Right now? When me tell you, say, it's when this man realized that my family is not business with me, mm -hmm. me start to get lick, kick, box, beaten, left, right, center. And I kid you not, every time I could have get it from the man and run, go back to my family, them, them carry me back to the man. Every time. Till me there in another space with the man for about two years. You know how I get up out of that? Mm -hmm. I have to knock him out one day with a piece of wood. Because the man kicked me speechless one day. He gave me some kick. Speechless. And I just sit down and plan for him the day. And when he come in the evening, I just knock him out of the board. Sit down over him and wait for the police to come. But I never call police still because he been a beat me. So nobody at all is on your side, basically? No. Nobody. It's just you alone against the world. I mean, always I feel I wonder why. That's why I try to kill myself so much time. So when me grow up now, the whole heap of time I always pray to me that they like me that just go to sleep and don't wake up. I try to kill myself a couple of times. Yeah, a really? couple of times. I just couldn't go through with it, but I tried a couple of times. I drink things, I swallow things. Because I just feel like no perp. Because I say, if I just dare so, and people just uh, ill treat me, so for no reason why I can't see. Right. Maybe I a burden for true, maybe I a jacket for true, so it might as well. Me. One of the time I start cussing all my dead mother. So why is she dead and gone? I used to go lay down on her grave. And ball, 
to the point where me all a dream says she had come for me. Mm -hmm. And nobody was around to help you know. Nobody relatives. in no business. Nobody in no business. They don't care. Because I am a child. Now them time there, my father used to always say this children are to be seen and not heard. Nobody not listen to me. I might not, nobody can come to my father's business either. Right. Because there was a neighbor who said to me one time, um, they want to know if something wrong with my father. Mm -hmm. They used to talk to so my stepmother, tie up my father to the point where when we used to sit down on the dining table, we used to look under the table if they, they, if him have a rope on him foot. Because I'm small, I don't understand what they mean by tie. Right. So when I hear tie, I look on him foot. Because they said the girl tie up him foot, them, so I look on him foot. I remember I go over the neighbor one day, she was an ex police lady, different neighbor. Mm -hmm. And she said to me, you know, so enough time I hear your stepmother over there call your mother over and I beat her. Why when she a licker, you know, lick her back. I say, you want my father to kill me? You can't lick her back, my father will kill me with lick. The neighbors knew, them always hear. Mm -hmm. But as I say, it's either they don't care or they just don't want to get involved. What about guidance counselor at school? Have you ever spoken to a guidance counselor when you were going to school? Uh, no, I used to talk to my teacher. I used to talk to my farm teacher. Mm -hmm. The teach I remember one teacher at school telling me, say, since me, all right, when I when I came to Kingston to live, it did rough. It did very rough because me have to find my way to come to St. Thomas every day. To come to school, me have to pass which my father work. Me remember when he said to me, me have to pass which me used to live. Me remember my stepmother, me remember all of this. Right. Grades are drop. Like, me their school are act out. And I remember one teacher said to me, one teacher said to me, say, she noticed say, from my god town, go leave my tail get high up in my back. She never come say, what wrong? Because right. we know say, this is not you. Right. What? She never saw. You see, if I get reactions like that, I'm not going to want to go to a teacher right. and That's say true. something. That's true. Right. So my, my farm teacher, though, Miss Monroe, she, she always listen. She always counsel me too. And I remember when my father refused to pay me school fee, mm -hmm. she brought me to him workplace. To ask him, say, even if him no want, do nothing for me. Just pay the school fee because I'm a brilliant student and she know I'm for drop out of school and him run her like a dog. He said, I'm not paying none. If him pay my school fee, I have to come back in my yard. That's what he said. So at that time you did leave? Yeah. Oh, you did leave your house? Yeah. If you could say something to your father, say, I'm happy to watch this right now, what yeah. would you say to him? You think me a jacket for real? Why you treat me different from my sister? Like, the two are living in the same house and I can see her obviously I treat me different from she. And every time I talk about it, it's like, I just, me are the problem. I just, me are the problem and I can't see where the problem is. I go from a straight A student to dropping out of freaking school. Yeah, have some time when I look for myself and I hate myself because I wish for me think me did I go there when I pick them. I do not know where near this so. And it's disappointing to me because I know what I did want. You see, if him could have, if him could have maybe like take a, um, a second, a minute, to sit down and even think about a few of the things that I say. I remember making a visit to my father. And my father said, You know, say, Sandra admit to most of the things what you say she do to you. My father said that to that me. That is who, the stepmother? Yes. He said that to me. And he also said, Even though we treat you bad, I know, say, Are you going to be the one to come take care of me when I'm old? But after that, him still go back again, go say me and tell lie. Let me tell you what hurt me wickedly over the years. Me and my father wife share the same birthday. Mm -hmm. And you know that you a man. A man now go have a wife. We have a birthday. And him now say happy birthday baby. Something something about our birthday. So what right. about me? What about your child we have the same birthday? 
and him never right him never keep a party or him never, never get you anything never present. never get a birthday present i don't remember nothing like that nothing like that remember one time we don't work at this place and a co-worker we don't work there for a couple of years and she said how oh, come in Christmas time and we are talking about like go country, go for visit family and stuff? We never hear you talk about the family. So I say, because we really don't have no family like that. So she said, What do you mean? Everybody have family. What do you mean? They said, Well, me now have none. And like, she said, All right, if you're not now, if you go, I'm glad she never really questioned it because we don't have to go down in the details. Right. But she said, All right, if you're not now, if you go, you can come by we for Christmas dinner and stuff. So I said, At first, me that said, No, because me kind of trust level never really up to them the time there. But I said, all right, I go go. When I go, I just itch up one place, sit down. And I just a look. And I just a look. And I see everybody come in, they a greet everybody. Everybody a hug up, kiss me. I mean, everybody in a high spirits. Happy. So I was, I was like, I got fake people, yeah. How many go and suffer? What would, I don't see them things up on TV, if you understand what I mean. Right, right. So, like, when my friend come and come ask me, I'm all right. And I said, I can ask you something, I'm not you feel here. She said, yeah. So I said, I told them see me why they behave so. She said, what do you mean? Yeah, because I say everybody does a hug up and a kiss up one another. I never see them someday yet. Kid you not. The girl stand up. She look for me. So I'm big eye water drop you so. And she give me one of the longest hugs I ever get in my life. At the time, I never knew what wait for. But now I know. I me, me, me challenge them. I challenge them already, you know. Mm -hmm. If I lie, me, I tell this gun come back and bite me in the ass. I was going to the bathroom one night and I heard when my stepmother tell my father to put out his mother. Right? When I'm an adult, me, me and my father they have a conversation. And I said, because I always try to make a relationship back with my father. So I always try to reach him. Um, me and him talk and I say, you know, I think I didn't expect too much of you, you know, because. If you never defend your mother against the lady, and that's your mother, why would you defend me? He said what I mean. I said, I heard when she tell you to put out your mother, you did it. So me should have think different of me. The man said me wicked. The man said me had the wickedest thing walk on the face of the earth. My ear when she tell him so. Yeah. Out of my ears, I don't go to the bathroom the night, but as I tell you, I'm afraid of the lady, I don't want to walk past her. So I said, I wait until they come out of the living room. One of them did a shake the baby buckle for feed her. One of them have the baby. And my ear, she said, you have to go tell your mother to find somewhere going in a kind of space in the day for her. Whose house was it? My father. Your father? Yes. And your stepmother tell, tell your father that? Yes. And he did put out yes, his mother? Yes, he did put out his mother. Because we used to go visit her where she lived after that with her third sister. And them tell me, say, I'm a liar and wicked and all of this. But I went to Vineyard Town one day for go work. And I met a man there telling me about a waste man where him know. We put out his mother for him, woman, and that was my father I matter about. And I've never met this man. See? So that means you're not lying. I've never met this man. At that day, they know said that man they're my father. So right now, how do you feel about your father? Do you resent him for not standing up for you when of you were Of course young? I do. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Of course I resent my father. There was a point when I hate him like Paisel, where I see him with something that... There was a point when I tell people, say, if me. He said, me about 1920, me didn't change. Me, me didn't say me want a career change. Me no want to do regular things like what women do. Me said, me want to keep people for a living. When me about me 1920. And me did make steps to move towards that, but something deter me. Prison deter me. Right. Is it me? Prison, it's trust me. because of what you've been through. Yes, prison, because me say, the first people me I got killed, I'm going to be my first person going to be my stepmother. And the second person going to be my father. I said, I might not kill him, but I'm sure I'll give him one. I said that for years. It took a long while for me to let go off of that. Till when I woke up one of me, one, one little youth when I grew up, an ex-son, the same one kill him father, I have to encourage him to let go that. Because I remember how thinking like that used to make me feel. Bitter, bitter. So um, right now, I don't feel like me that want to shoot my father again. Mm -hmm. I just feel like if I see my road and I want something to drink, I would give him. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. You know, and 
really, really moved by your story. And, you know, wish, wish you all the best. Thanks. And um, I will advise, though, you know, to talk to, like, a professional. I, I want to talk to people about it, but in a Jamaica, they like to brush things under the carpet. Um, I've heard people telling me I know everything good for, you, good for talk. So people like them, they may just stay away from. But, I mean, this is mental issue that you're going through and you're still facing Actually, it. Actually, they're on medication. Have... There was a point where they want to put me on injection because I was considered a threat to myself and other people. Then they want to lock me up in one place. And I think earlier you said you had PTSD. PTSD, yeah. Post-traumatic stress disorder. From all of this? From all of this. There was a time, remember one day me across East Street. Although I wrap up, but I just remember it. Me mm -hmm. across East Street one day. I know them time I tried to kill myself hard. So I see one big truck I come out the road and I just stop in the middle of the road. Like, I just stop. And the man come out of the truck, drop him brakes, cross me, and tell me, say, Whatever me have has stressed me like that. If you try to put it down because walking out in a truck is not the answer. Any last thing that you want to say? You know, um, whether to your father or your stepmother or your sister or just overall? Um, I mean, I really have nothing to say to my stepmother, the sister then because it's a between me and my father. I'm a wish him would have man up I wish he would have just be a man and face me. That's all. So I can ask him the question that I need to ask him and he can give me the answer that I need to hear. That's it. <laughs>